Good morning. Hi, honey. <laughs> it is so hot. <laughs> oh, my God. But, what, but what? Go ahead. Before we start about the weather, yeah. can I just say what today is? What's today? Today is <gasps> July 27, oh, 2018. And yes. exactly one year ago, today, I retired as the store manager for Louis Vuitton. I no longer have to work. I haven't been near a mall in a year. <laughs> she hasn't been near a mall in a year. That is fantastic. The fantastic. Except for I shop online. Well, that's not a mall. No, it's Amazon mall. <laughs> I have no idea what topic we were going to talk about, but I didn't expect that. <laughs> Actually, I think I might talk about uh, some of the upgrades that I've made to my bike recently. I've gone from a 7 to a 10 speed. I think I may talk about that a little bit more during the ride rather than now. Uh, just to give you an idea of what this video is about in the event that you want to get out and not to watch it. Uh, I shouldn't say that, should I? No, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, today is an extremely warm day and uh, it reminds me of a, of a couple years ago when I was following somebody on Strava who was a very accomplished and strong cyclist and they were doing hill repeats on such a day somewhere out Midwest in the mid uh, 90 degree with uh, indexes uh, with humidity well above 100. Anyway, she got dehydrated, she collapsed, fell over and uh, fractured her hip, so, or pelvis rather. Uh, so listen, when you get a hot day like this, my tip is slow down, drink fluids, don't try to do your, your uh, personal records on, the, on those days, just take it easy. Yeah, it's like a steam bath out here. It really is. Uh, it probably feels worse when we're stopped for just a little bit and then your body really starts to uh, try to cool down, try to perspire a lot more. When we're moving, it's not quite as bad, but uh, the thing is is that we just have to keep really conscious of the fact that it is really hot, really steamy, take it easy. Yeah, and you know what? We haven't been out since last Saturday. Well, that's that's the other thing, and too. I just like, I need to get my legs pedaling. That's the other thing, too. It's been like this for about a week or so. Today and tomorrow, I think, are supposed to be the last couple days of it, and then, uh, we're going to get a slight break and then back to humidity again, but that's when August starts, so that's what, what do you expect, right? Yep, that's it. That's it. Okay, so uh, stay tuned for the video. I think I'll be talking about uh, converting the bike from a 7 to a 10 speed and putting a large cog on the back for hill climbing. Thanks again for watching. Click and subscribe if you like this video, and we'll see you again in the next video. Happy weekend. Yeah, so this morning I thought I'd talk about uh, a, a recent change that I made to the bike. Essentially, it is an upgrade. And what I've done is I've gone from converting the bike that was a 7-speed up to a 10-speed. And that was not my intention uh, for the upgrade that I had in mind at the time. The upgrade that I had in mind at the time was to change out the rear cassette I had on the bike, which was something like 11 to 28, to something with a, uh, a bigger cog, an easier cog in the back to help me out a little bit with uh, hill climbing and such. So uh, given that it's a seven speed cassette, I was really kind of limited in uh, my options for a cassette, a package cassette for the for the bike to uh, get me that additional easy gear that I wanted. Let's stop here for a second. Let this truck get by us. You ready to go, honey? Okay. How you doing? So, I did some shopping around and I kind of like uh, most people, well, I don't know, most people. I guess uh, I started doing some shopping around and what I uh, did was I relied on Amazon primarily to find uh, another cassette that would give me a, uh, a larger, easier cog in the back other than a 28. And to be honest with you, I don't know whether or not in fact I did find something through Amazon or if I had to go through some other uh, cycling shop, warning, or uh, cycling website 
but I ended up finally finding uh, a seven speaker set that I believe was 11 I'm sorry was either 12 or 13 to a 32 so that was an additional four teeth on the back Now I put that cassette on and I tried it out for a while and it did satisfy did satisfy my intentions for a while. In other words, it did give me the ability to throw the bike into a easier gear than I had had before to climb a hill. But uh, the downside was because it's only a seven speed cassette the jumps that I was making between the cogs uh, was uh, more than just a little noticeable. So if you're in an easier gear and getting going and you want to switch up to a harder gear to get moving a little more, uh, that was a pretty noticeable jump. Coincidentally, nearly the same time that I did find and ordered and installed that 32 tooth cog on the back of the bike I started reading more and more about people on road bikes who threw mountain bike cassettes on the bike and ended up with a 40 tooth cassette for the lowest gear uh, and I thought yay that would be great if I could do something like that. I mean, I really embrace the idea. But, considering what sort of a large jump I was finding on seven speeds between a 13 tooth and a 32, I knew it would be probably impossible to go to a 40 tooth cassette on a seven speed. And uh, I spent two or three days online looking for a cassette that would uh, allow me to make that allow me to put on a 40 tooth with a seven speed. And uh, pretty much as expected, there was nothing like that available. And uh, nor probably should there be. It wasn't a very good uh, combination. So then I thought, well, you know what? How about if I switched over to a 10 speed? And I suppose I could have gone to an 11 speed route as well, but I just think 10 speeds is just plenty for me. More than adequate, in other words. Uh, and sure enough, you know, it wasn't hard to find a 10 speed cassette that offered a 40 tooth cog in the back. And so I decided, okay, I already once went through the exercise of changing my uh, original shifters on the bike, which were Shimano TI ones, TI type shifter, to uh, micro shift shifters, which I really liked. And so I searched around and sure enough, I found micro shift shifters for a 10 speed and uh, there goes the train and uh, I found them through Amazon through a third-party seller I ordered them and I was supposed to get delivery within about five to seven days well as it turns out that third-party seller canceled my order without telling me, refunded the money, which I didn't realize, and so I sat back and waited nearly two weeks for the shifters to show up, and after a while I finally decided, okay, what's going on here, and uh, got a hold of Amazon, then found out the shifters got canceled. 
kind of upset me a little bit because I was really looking forward to using the micro shift but I wasn't about to screw around with that same company again and put in another order so then I decided well go back to Shimano and I looked at group sets and I decided on the Shimano 105 and so as they say one thing led to another I decided to uh, hello baby doll so I decided to go with the Shimano 105 shifters and while I was at it I said okay get a derailleur rear and front and ordered the whole package and order the uh, cassette that I wanted to had the 40 tooth on it now it's a straightforward process to change shifters change derailleurs change cogs on a wheel nothing about that is unusual but to accommodate a 40 tooth cog on the back the rear derailleur needs to drop down somewhat and to do that you have to buy a special little item called a road link and essentially your uh, derailleur is uh, removed from the frame of the bike the road link goes in place of the derailleur and then the, the derailleur gets attached to the road link the other consideration you need to make when going to a 40 tooth cog on the back is you may need a longer chain than what you had before you made the change and that's exactly what my problem was I needed to buy two 10 speed chains and after sizing what size chain what length chain I needed correctly turns out I needed two more links of chain from the second chain to make the system work did a little bit of adjustment it took a little while to uh, get it just right but I am now riding a 10 speed bike instead of a 7 speed bike and from the minute I got on the bike and started riding it and shifting a little bit oh my god can I tell the difference just a slight jump between gears that affects your cadence it is just un it's just remarkable I was commenting to Susan after I took the first test ride on it I said the bike feels lighter feels faster I mean it's just uh, amazing uh, what the change of gearing does and as far as the 40 tooth uh, uh, cog on the back that's probably overkill I'm certain a lot of people would say so but I tell you the day you come up with a big ugly hill instead of weaving back and forth and grinding it out getting on that big cog on the back is just so sweet you can't believe it and I will be honest with you I probably use the cog other than just trying it out see how what the difference is I've probably used the cog uh, maybe four or five times and once was for uh, a video that I did recently where there's this big ugly hill in our area uh, with a 12 14 percent grade on it that I never could climb before that I did test out the uh, the cog on and it did work out for me so when you don't anyway that's uh, those are the changes I made to the bike and uh, sometimes I do get a question what changes have I made to this bike since I've owned it uh, the simplest way I can explain that is the only original component on this bike is the rear brake calipers everything else is new everything else is different front fork handlebars uh, stem uh, headset wheels uh, uh, the uh, cassette in the back uh, the, the derailleurs cabling uh, even the bar tape um, seat post seat so <laughs> the only thing original to this bike the frame. well the frame that's <laughs> that's a good point is the frame and um, the back rear, the rear brake calipers um, would I do this starting out would I would I go down this path with uh, 
buying a inexpensive bike at the beginning knowing that I'd be making all these changes as I had the bike I think for the average person probably not I think the average person should do more like what Susan did which is buy uh, a really decent uh, entry-level bike uh, seven eight hundred dollars uh, specialized but I should I should have done the same thing on for a specialized or a track or something along that line aluminum bike which is absolutely fine which has a good group set and I would have been probably would have saved myself a lot of angst along the way um, but uh, now that it's all over with I'm not making any more changes to the bike and I'm very happy with the bike. I love the new shifters. I love the 10 speed. It made all the difference in my riding. And it looks great. It does look great. I had bike envy. Uh, she said that a couple of times oh, to me. Yeah, so I'm, it looks I'm so clean and just like, it looks very good. Looks well, great. I appreciate that. Uh, we do take care of our bikes and that matters too. Anyway, that's the uh, subject of this video today. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, check us out in the next week or so for a new video. And thanks again for watching. Happy weekend again. Happy weekend. It's Friday. Oh, full moon Friday. Full moon. Oh. <laughs>